Uh, hello, I'm Matt Coos with Cumulos. I'm going to provide a short demo of our Enterprise Compliance app. Uh, we'll launch the app uh, in the Splunk app window here on the left. And as you can see here on the home page, um, the application is uh, broken up into four main areas. Uh, executive overviews, um, where we provide different views for the CISO and CIO uh, around compliance. Uh, we then break down views into family, um, uh, control family views, and, uh, and then uh, specific controls. Um, and then we dig into individual controls and enhancements. And then the fourth area is the configuration section where you set up your organizations, suborgs, uh, systems, and data sources. Um, the app itself is based on uh, the NIST uh, Special Pub 800-53 Rev4, uh, and it covers um, the breadth of control families in that standard, as you can see here. And we'll jump right into the app itself. So we usually start with the org overview. And this is really meant for that executive um, perspective to give you a, a view of compliance across the organization. Um, here we show the top row, we're showing kind of your overall compliance scores um, based on assessed values, uh, providing an adjusted score and a true score. Um, depending on how many controls have actually been assessed. And then the next row uh, goes into a little bit more um, detail uh, and shows you sub-organizations within the overall organization um, and their scores. And then coming on down here, you've got a couple other views. Um, we do a side-by-side -side comparison of, of sub-organizations and their scores, uh, trends of sub-orgs over time, uh, a view by family of controls across the org, and then a view um, across the different suborgs in terms of uh, controls that are um, implemented or deemed as NA um, or not implemented. If we drill down, as uh, Splunk is very adept, adept at uh, enabling, um, we get into a suborg view. And so here we're looking at the Cumulus suborg. Um, and basically it's the same layout, but we go uh, a little bit deeper here in, in the second row here and, and below. Um, instead of suborgs here, we're looking at individual systems within that suborg uh, and those scores. So that um, the executives might want to discuss compliance with individual system owners um, or programs. And then uh, you can see below similar views, just now all based on systems. So side by side trends and family and so forth. Uh, from there, um, we provide uh, a breakdown by family. So if you want to drill in and look at uh, what families of controls you're doing. Uh, well or poorly in. Uh, this will show you that. And as you can see, those are the different families. And then you can drill into you know, a specific family of controls and how you're doing across those specific, in this case, access control family controls and enhancements. And then finally, um, we allow you to drill down to the most atomic level um, which is the control page itself. And uh, every control and enhancement has its own page um, and view. Uh, and this is basically where uh, we are providing a one-stop shop in terms of audit evidence um, for each control and enhancement. Um, all the control pages are structured similarly. Um, you see the, the controls and enhancements across the top. For any particular control or enhancement, you can hit uh, the control detail and view the actual um, requirement itself right out of uh, the NIST standard. Um, you'll also see these uh, organizationally defined um, parameters boxes. They're grayed out here because they haven't been defined, but uh, once they're defined for a system, they'll show up here in blue. Uh, and you can do that for you know, other controls as well. Here's an enhancement example for AC24 um, to give you that. So you don't have to constantly refer back to the standard. Um, the other features here on the on the control page um, include the ability to enter assessment notes so um, folks can come in either system owners or however the organization uh, defines this role uh, and enter in you know, new assessments they've done or new reviews of the, of the control submit that and you can see that we keep a ongoing record of the information um, for the auditor to take a look at and, and a lot of times auditors want to see that, that record over time and controls being reviewed. 
Um, and then same thing for audit notes. So we have a very similar capability. You can enter a note, you can change the status, uh, pass, failed, and then report on that later. Um, and it does keep a log of, of who entered that information and when. Uh, and then we allow you to um, enter in policy information. So some controls require uh, policy updates. If they're short and sweet, you can um, quickly enter in them, them in here um, just to have it in a short set. You can put in a URL, you can put uh, the link to somewhere else. Um, and that'll also be updated here and show you uh, when it was updated and by whom. Uh, as we go down the page, um, the next section, in this case, this is a more of a technical control. So you see uh, some of these technical views. Um, not every control has that, not every control is technical. Um, but this is really where the power of Splunk comes in handy, um, where we're ingesting you know, machine data and then mapping that information to this control, to each control. Um, and we're showing you those values uh, in, in basically real time. Um, so we've got top account managers by action, um, top actions uh, by type. And this control happens to be worried about uh, modifying, creating, deleting, um, et cetera, of different accounts. Um, the final sort of section of the control pages include the ability to upload uh, other evidence. So many of the controls are policy oriented or non-technical. Um, and so we provided the ability to upload uh, screenshots of, of, let's say, settings or um, just basic policies. If you want to upload your full policy version here, uh, you can do that. You can either assign that from, from um, you upload a document once for a system, you can, you can assign it to various controls so you don't uh, have to upload that multiple times. So you can see it shows up right here. Or you can uh, go out and grab um, you know, a new document and give it a name and upload that here to your evidence. So basically it gives you the ability to, to make sure all your evidence is in one spot so when the auditor comes in um, you've got all your information here to include past reviews um, and past audits uh, and, and be able to kind of pass an audit with no problem. So we try to keep it simple. Um, that's the basic app. Uh, I'll show you quickly show you um, one more page just to you one last view. And so this is basically our, think of it as your investment prioritization um, page. So it gives you the idea of like at the enterprise level, you know, where would you invest in technology to raise your compliance scores? So what we've done here is we've grouped controls um, uh, against different technical capabilities that you could deploy. Um, you know, whether these are sort of, you could go to Magic, uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant or um, CDM, for example, Continuous Diagnostics Mitigation Program, but there's tools in each of these areas that you could uh, buy and deploy. And we're basically assessing the controls that relate to those technical areas um, and giving you an idea of where you might want to invest um, across the organization. Uh, so that's the Enterprise Compliance app. I uh, hope you'd enjoy it. Um, and feel free to reach out to us with questions uh, here at Cumulus. You can email sales at cumulus.com um, or reach out through our distributor, Kerasoft. Um, uh, and we work very closely with Splunk as well. So. Uh, Thanks very much for your time and uh, look forward to hearing from you.